Speaking of the bowls, because we're going to come to them in, mo in a moment, interesting that um, this is where the, the raised eyebrow bit. Uh, why Martin Sander got it wrong on the bowl says Andrew Foster, who was tweeting me a couple of times about this. The big surprise to me was Andrew Foster's a real person, uh, <laughs> but he is. Um, and it's an interesting article he's written about uh, things Martin Sandler said about the Bradford Bulls in the past. And let's talk about the Bradford Bulls now. Well, you've been quite vociferous about the need for an inquiry, yeah. an independent public inquiry. Because mm -hmm. as we've said on here on many an occasion, it's not about what's happening now. No. It's about what's been happening for seven or eight years and how mistakes, which are, which are proven in history, seem to get repeated. And one thing that has broken today is Bradford have fired their accounts late, but are £1.4 million in debt. Now, for a club that is in the Championship, who are in the process at the moment of relinquishing as many players as they're trying to, to re-sign, uh, probably haven't got enough to put a team out at the moment. Where do we go with this Bradford story? So, irrespective of the people who are now involved in running the club, who look very much like the people previous who people were, who yeah. ran the club, who look similar to the previous people who run the club before that, which raises questions about how we allow certain people to run clubs. You're in charge of the RFL. You're Simon Johnson, who's just been appointed as the new chair of the board of the RFL. Do you try and sweep it under the carpet? make bland statements about we've checked as much as we can check and everything's as above board as it could possibly be or did you say look we've had enough now this is a potentially important club to the sport that's been allowed to almost be desecrated by some people who've been in charge if that's not too strong a word although I, I don't think it is um, how do you stop the merry-go-round yeah, it's a tough one. I think um, it's nothing short of a disgrace what's gone on with it. I think it's a it's a it's an institution of a club. Um, it was um, you know a huge club um, going back to long before I played, and I don't need to tell anyone that the history of the club and and, and my memories of it. I just think um, the only way to, to to draw a line in the sand. Because it can't get much worse. The next step is it goes extinct. Because they have got no fixed assets. They don't play in the home ground. Um, they, haven't, they don't have any facilities or any, any, anything to, to loan. They just owe 1.4 million. Which, to be fair to the investors that have come in, they don't have 1.4 million. No. Um, so why not draw a line in the sand? Because the next step, it goes extinct. Because um, unless, it, unless it gets sorted out. Uh, I think for the credibility of the RFL, uh, and for the game, I think it, that Simon uh, Johnson needs to support um, a public inquiry. I think it was, I saw his statement, and don't know Simon, um, but you know, I can say these kind of things now, I'm not in the sport. I think it's all just towing the, the same line, and you know, there's no way that um, it was very sort of, you know, we've checked. And I'm not disagreeing with what he said, but it didn't come across as though it was a, a real thorough, proper investigation, or, or impartial. Um, well, there is going to be culpability at governing body level. It, it clearly wouldn't be people like him. No. He's new to Absolutely. It. Well, that's, well, that's what do I'm you have to, at point. some point, throw your hands up and say, look, even if there is some dirty linen in, in our cupboard that I need to get out and Absolutely. expose, we have to do and it. And I think it was a right, it's a right to, it's fresh, um, fresh people, fresh board, and that, if there's any time to do it, it's now. And it's kind of bigger than... Than that, you know, it, need, it needs because while there's while it's not, there's always going to be this, and in the world of social media, there's always going to be that. As in, I feel for the poor Bradford fans first and foremost, but it's gone beyond that because what it's going to start doing is I think I, I mentioned it on on social media tomorrow, but it's getting to the point where people don't actually care because it's just like oh it's happening again and it's happening again, and it's like well it, it was a big thing when it first happened because it's Bradford Bulls, but like we do on we do not go in the same way. But the point being is how is it allowed to be happen with the people that, that it's happened with over a consistent period? Where's the governance? Um, where are the fit and proper persons? Um, There's too much conflict of interest and there always has been. And that's that's my, my probably my point with the with the independent inquiry and Simon Johnson. The, that's why it needs to be independent because of the conflict of interest that the RFL owned. 
it's just if well, it was again, put it this way, if it was any other sport looking in, it just it's bonk, it's it's that mad. Well, and now that... we've got, um, and again, uh, this is in no way detrimental to the integrity of Mark Sawyer, but he owns a quarter of the club that now plays at his stadium. Now, if that isn't some form of conflict of interest, no. I don't and, know what it is. And, uh, and it leads itself open to then they sold the players to Hulk Car, who are then going to be on drill bench to use breaks, like, and that might be all well and good in an innocent. And it but, might be within the, the absolute. The bylaws of the sport, but, it's just but it, all, looks it looks horrendous, wrong. and it needs. It's the same as we've got a campaign to bring the club back to. Well, this is where politicians are just. Oh, we've got an about. election coming, and all of a sudden politicians are saying we back what's, the campaign to. But where are they going to plan? Well, what's the point of the old par party parliamentary rebellion group if not to investigate things like? Well, they should be the ones to... that are calling for. Exactly. The, or, or in or fact, they, they should be to... offering to undertake the independent inquiry. Put it before a committee in parliament, like we've seen with the cricket. I just think what it's sad, but then there's, you know, I had. You know the players I, I, I as well. well. You you know players that have been uh, uh, shortchanged yeah. by whatever's yeah. gone on above them. And I can speak from experience in that. When I played at Bradford, and um, Mark Green was, Mark Green was the owner, and and my dealings with Mark, um, it were it were appalling, um, and I'm happy to say it. Um, you know, I sort of I hurt my knee, um, and was ready for retirement, and it was, uh, you know, I mean, I needed need a knee replacement, and it was sort of coming to a compromise agreement. Um, and sent it to the solicitors and she said it was the most deceitful document she'd ever seen in 25 years of practice. Um, and some of them players signed those documents and didn't get paid and I didn't, um, for, thankfully that had sent it. Um, and it's just the characters, like, that he, he shafted a lot of people. Um, but then the, the continuous mistakes, I'm not suggesting, this is my experience, so I, 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 but I'm not suggesting Andrew Chalmers or, or pre pre or, or post that because I don't know but it seems to be that they've sucked the blood out of the club and the assets or any cash value and when it's suddenly gone um, but what they've left is just an absolute mess and a shell of a club that is not even playing in the city and it's playing in Dewsbury but they become Swinton next don't they or Rochdale or Oldham or whatever and they have no ground you know you can look at they've got no assets I just think the they, worry they today is that if you were buying a club that had limited, if hardly any, liabilities um, and could almost start again. Which has got it, I've done it. There's a sort of logic, but mm. when you then see that there's a balance sheet with a debt of 1.4 million, and that's not last season, mm -hmm. that's two seasons ago, and then you realise that they're now nomadic as well, you just can't turn a blind eye to it. I, I've got nothing but admiration for the Bradford fans that have already bought season tickets. Because they didn't know that half of their team was going to be sold off when they bought no. them. And whilst they knew they were going to be playing at Dewsbury, they've been sold the idea that it's going to only going to be for a year. Whereas the reality is the more you look at the available places you could play in Bradford, that, that can't be sold within a year. Unless somebody's going to pay an awful lot of money to bring odds up to standard, which isn't going to be Bradford. No. It's not going to be there. No. If they're going to build on the Richard Dudd Sports Centre site, that isn't going to happen within a year. No. The stadium at Horsefall isn't fit for purpose in the Championship, which is where they're going to be playing for the next couple of years, you would imagine. Um, I don't know how they do move back to Bradford. Mm -hmm. So again, the, it's the fans that are being sold a lie. And yes, they tend to buy into that, but we know what fans are like. We just we, yeah, we always we see the, 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 the rosiest picture. Which... And I, my, my worry with it is, and it's kind of... You know, we've made a bit of a statement, or and it's kind of the longer they leave it, it'll just go away, and we don't talk about it, and it just sort of gets swept under the carpet with time. And I was thinking about actually driving. I was driving today, and I went past the six or six, and I was, and it came that came into mind. I thought I've not heard much other than it was before the accounts were published uh, this afternoon. It was this morning, and I, and I thought it's quiet down, and that's what everyone had just wanted to do is just. Quiet and down, well, then the season starts. And they've done that with Eamon McManus, yeah. who has just been announced again today, has been fined £3,000, a thousand of it suspended, for the comments that he made in the programme yeah. about refereeing. Mm -hmm. Now, that was two months ago? Six, just after, yeah, just six after, weeks ago? Yeah. Just after Wembley? Just after a week after Wembley. That it's taken over three months for the Catalan Warrington 
uh, deliberation to come down for the trouble that was, you know, I think we all knew that both sides were culpable yeah, in absolutely. some respects, but it took three months. Yeah. And, and you just, you, you do wonder that once Bradford announced a couple more signings, once they go into pre-season training, once the fixtures yeah, yeah, come out next yeah. week, Boxing Day they might I play. And I think that's what I was most disappointed with, uh, with, 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 with the new board, and I think it's, it was a real, so yes, I'm not disputing that they would have looked into it, but the, it's not impartial. Um, I think there'd have been a real good support from the game to say, look, this historic club has been decimated into, a, into a, just a, a shell and a mess. What's gone on? Well, I think somebody you know very well, Michael Carter, has been saying exactly that, that he's asked a lot of questions. But he can't get the answers. Well, the only way you're going to get the answers, the, the questions he'll be asking will be exactly the right questions. I've no doubt about that whatsoever. But the only way he might ever get his answers is if we have an independent inquiry. How would that go? So, you, you may know better than me. How would that come about? How would an independent inquiry come out? So, we've got the All Parliamentary Committee, we've got a presence in the House. All the RFL can appoint people who they believe to be independent, so judges or. Um, People who've got affiliations either with the game or know of the game but are not linked to any one club that could run a commission. So why wouldn't they? Because they've got things to hide. Would the cynic would say? <laughs> no, but why, you know, the, 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 it all comes back to that one decision, doesn't it? Why did someone at the Rugby Football League decide that purchasing the lease to Ansel Stadium was going to be the But, then, this, the but then also it's going to cost the clubs 200 grand a year. So surely. The stakeholders, like Michael Carr can't afford a proportion of that, you know, or, and so on. You but know. can the RFL ask Super League clubs? Because that's the other thing, Bradford yeah. now under the auspices But my point being is... But certainly Swinton can't afford it, no. or Rochdale, or... But my point being is, there's enough, there's enough common want and need for... For answers, is, is, there, is a simple... I also term. think it cleans up the sport. Absolutely. It shows that we are responsible. Um, I mean, I've watched with interest, without fully understanding the mechanics of it, what's happened at Berry, and very nearly happened at Bolton, because I think there are some parallels. Uh, you know, owners who were deemed to be fit and proper that, that clearly under investigation were, and because we are rugby league and not football, we don't get the same level of scrutiny, which in some respects is, is a good thing, yeah. if you're trying to hide stuff, and in others isn't. So I, I just think if I'm the RFL at the moment, and I get the opportunity at, at this moment in time, which doesn't stop anything that's going on at ground level to keep Bradford going, no. but it's you organise an independent inquiry into mm. how we've got to work. You go back to wherever you think the starting point was, probably 2005, if we're being honest, because when that Absolutely. great team started to break up, Insane. you can almost trace the demise on the field, which became the demise off the field. Yep. Chris Casey let his shareholding go, and it's almost from the minute that he decided that he was going to... It's 2006 onwards. You have an inquiry that says we're not necessarily looking at what's happening today. No, no, because you want it to flourish. You know, there's nobody wants a Bradford side to, a team to succeed. I think the whole sport does. Of course I do. Because whatever the rights and wrongs of what Brian McDermott said, we do need City teams. Yes, and also, you know, there's... I, I, I would argue that people of who care about rugby league, forget you what club you support, want answers as well because mm. they've seen they've had experiences where they've been to Bradford and been towards them when it's been fun and it's been part of their DNA growing up and to see it that they, 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 people are daft that there's a reason for it to go so people have got a genuine interest regardless what club you support mm. in what the hell's gone on that club I also think that if you know that there is a process that the game is prepared to go through of which the game itself might be part victim of that process but if it ever happened to your club you feel as though the people that run the sport yeah. really have. Which again goes back to my point of it. It was it's a perfect time with a new board, a yes. new chair, a new to do it. But my question is why wouldn't you? That that's the question. Why wouldn't you sanction if whoever could ask that question to Simon, why wouldn't you sanction or support a public inquiry? There you go. We've thrown it out there. As a 
and I know Simon does take an interest in the program, so if you can, yeah, and it's not, you know, and I think, and, 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 and I, I think we're all doing it out, and it's of, absolute, yeah, we're and not it's doing not, it out of malice. We, we don't want Bradford to no. fail. We're doing it because we never want to see this happen again. Absolutely, in and it's a, and it's nothing to, you know, I don't know, it's nothing. I think it's just a really perfect time for mm. for the game and with a new chair, a new board. Um, to, to, to get some answers for, for the game and more importantly for the for them poor fans. So a few weeks after the election and uh, we'll all forget about it, it'll be all right. Wait for them to turn up at Bellevue now. We'll be there soon enough. Promising the earth. Uh, indeed. Um, enough on Bradford team, Graham. You're right. We, we, the finished. problem is we've spoken about it. I think it's important for five years. when you've got somebody in the studio who's not, not only oh, yeah, yeah, oh, no, club, but taken an interest in... <laughs> how the club's been run. It's really important to get your view rather than, than ours because you can add something. Yeah. And if you think that there should be a public inquiry, then I think that's a question you've asked.